Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the top remote jobs in cybersecurity. So if you're someone who is graduating college or bootcamp or is just looking in general for a new job or has just been spending some time in the job market, you'll probably see that a lot of jobs in tech, specifically cybersecurity, have gone towards the remote slash hybrid work model, which has definitely been a big effect of post-pandemic job structures. But with more and more cybersecurity professionals looking for cybersecurity roles that are fully remote, I wanted to make this video to list out these top five roles in cybersecurity that have the most fully remote jobs. And most of them, believe it or not, are paying remote workers the same compared to if you're working in a specific city for a specific company. And the first job on this list is probably no surprise any of you it is one of the most popular most common cybersecurity roles out there and that is a security or an soc analyst so these two titles can often be used interchangeably depending on the company that you're working for but typically as a security analyst you're going to be working in an soc environment or a security operations center which doesn't have to be a physical location especially as someone who's working remote your soc analyst could be working in completely different regions across the world and there are definitely pros and cons with that but one of the pros is that because people are able to work remotely they're working in different time zones as well so there may be less stressful on call hours since the team could potentially be more globalized but as an soc or security analyst you're basically going to be monitoring different security events different incidents different alerts or pop-ups that come up anomalies and any logs that you may see any of these security events that happen on a daily basis you're going to take those and investigate try to see if there's any action that needs to be taken by the security team or maybe there's a new vulnerability that you found and you need to bring this up to the development team or some other part of the company and needs to get involved basically there are going to be different types of requests coming into your team's mailbox that are hopefully all security related and then of course you're going to be also monitoring any dashboards or any metrics or analytics that your security team typically looks at to see if there's any security events or incidents that you need to look into now of course this means that your team is typically going to be a reactive team specifically for soc analysts you're typically going to be working on things post boom which means if something bad happens there's definitely a proactive and a reactive side to soc slash security analyst because for one part you're analyzing the things and seeing if there's any anomalies before an incident breaks out or if some security event actually happens and then there's also those requests that come in where there's already a vulnerability where there may have been a security incident and you have to look into those and do your own research and due diligence so it's really a very flexible role and and I am actually also working currently fully remote as a security analyst. So I've made a few videos on security analysts and what I do in my job, but I can link those below if you guys wanna check those out. And if you're interested in a security analyst role, it's definitely one of the most popular roles as a beginner when you're getting into cybersecurity for early career slash mid careers. And it's also one of those roles in cybersecurity where you get to touch a lot of different things and learn a lot across the board, which I really appreciate. So I definitely think it's an awesome role if you're someone who is looking to learn a lot and also work cross-functionally across many different teams. And just for your reference, the average salary for a security analyst is about $70,000 per year in the US. All right, the next role on this list is one that is fairly new to me, and that is the threat researcher. This title can also be used interchangeably with a threat intelligence analyst. So depending on the roles that you're applying for, you may find both of these titles listed. And the average salary in the US for this role is about $75,000 per year. And of course, these salaries are definitely going to vary depending on where you're living, years of experience that you have, as well as the company in the sector they are applying for. Of course, I used to say that salary dependent on where you live, but nowadays, especially for remote roles, it's usually one salary band or a specific salary range for a role. And depending on your experience, that is how much you're going to get paid. It's typically no longer applied to the location that you're living in, especially now when people are working remote. And and that is the case for all these jobs in this list as a FYI. So threat researchers actually have one of the most interesting jobs out there. It's kind of similar to cyber threat intelligence, 
where you're looking into specific news or or specific articles about cyber hacks or cyber attacks out there but one of the main roles of a cyber threat researcher is to keep track of certain apts or advanced persistent threats for example nation states to try to understand their motives the tools and techniques that they're using or trying to identify their targets to understand what their motivations are depending on these types of attacks and essentially trying to figure out their long-term goals for a specific ATP group's strategy. Now, of course, as a threat researcher, you're going to be analyzing most likely APTs or nation states or basically the threat actors that are very advanced, very well-funded, may or may not have some kind of nation state that is backing them up in terms of finances and resources. Your job is going to be doing research on that specific APT that is relevant to your sector or your company. Maybe it's one that's already targeting your specific company. And then in turn, using all the information that you gather into some kind of strategy or plan to help formulate, to help find a way to prevent any future attacks from happening or prepare for any cybersecurity incident that may occur that may be tied back to this APT. Oftentimes, threat analysts or threat researchers may also be working with government agencies like the FBI, the CIA, or any other groups that may have more information that is not yet made public on these APT groups. And essentially, it's going to be your job to know what's happening, know the technologies you're using, the malware you're exploiting, everything that has to do with a specific APT. You're basically going to be the subject matter expert for that specific group or multiple different groups that may have similar motivations or goals. All right, the next role on this list is a security engineer. And this is also a role that is very interesting to me as someone who comes from a software development background. But essentially, a security engineer can be seen similarly to a security analyst, but you're definitely going to be more on the engineering side where you may not necessarily be coding. Of course, you may be coding, you may be scripting, you may be doing some kind of automation. But just in terms of engineering, you're definitely going to be more on the hands-on technical side compared to someone who is a security analyst. And the salary for a security engineer in the US is about $96,000 per year. So as a security engineer, you're going to have a lot of different roles in your company. But of course, it depends on the team that you're going into. You may be implementing different security protocols, managing some kind of security system or IT security infrastructure for your company. But this also may extend out to your company's clients as well. So think of yourself as someone who has the knowledge of a security analyst. You may have even started or came from a security analyst background and then became a security engineer. And now you're in a role where you may be doing more hands-on implementations or managing different IT tools or security tools. And even though not all security engineers may be coding or maybe scripting, you probably have knowledge of coding or know how to code or are able to understand code. And I do think that's something that definitely sets apart security analysts versus security engineers because they typically know their way around an application more than a typical security analyst might. Another part of your job may be implementing or testing new security features as well as planning any hardware, software, firmware upgrades that your company needs as well as for the applications and systems that your company relies on. And then of course the typical troubleshooting that you get with any security role and getting brought on into different cybersecurity incidents. For example, if there is some kind of security event that happens, then the development team or the SOC team may ask a security engineer to come in and share their expertise on specific questions or topics that may come up, especially for the systems that you're managing. All right, next role on this list is a cloud security engineer. So this is another security engineering role, but specific for cloud infrastructure. Cloud is definitely one of those buzzwords that has gotten less coverage compared to you know the AI and machine learning side of things. But of course, cloud is just as important as ever. Most companies nowadays are kind of expected to be moving to the cloud or planning to move to the cloud if, if they're not already on the cloud. But a cloud is essentially just another machine hosted by an external vendor. If it's a public cloud or if your company created its own cloud that is private, which typically isn't as common and it's a lot more expensive and, and time and resource consuming. And then of course there are hybrid clouds out there where companies may use their own private cloud for certain things and then they also have external vendors for it, public cloud at a very high level. So a cloud security engineer is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to be working as a security engineer, but focused specifically on cloud infrastructure. And of course, this can look very different depending on whether your company has an internal hybrid or a public cloud. I would say public clouds are probably the most popular if you're a standard company and don't have very 
niche or unique needs for an internal cloud or to justify the cost of an internal cloud. And of course, just in terms of the basics of cloud infrastructure, I can lay out a diagram of, of cloud versus on-prem or physical data centers, but typically companies are going towards the cloud option just because of scalability as well as flexibility. And it's typically lower in cost compared to having your own physical data centers or your own on-premises locations to store your data, host your sites and applications and everything else. But of course this means that if you're using a public cloud, all of your systems and applications and everything else lives on some other vendors, companies, environment typically microsoft azure google cloud platform aws these are probably the most popular cloud providers out there but getting insight into your systems and applications running on the public cloud is very different from having everything on premises or in your or in your own data centers so there may be different technologies that are needed when you're doing upgrades to a system it may be different when you're doing patches vulnerability scans anything that you would typically do in your on-premises environment if you're doing that in a cloud environment, it may look very different. For example, there may be extra approvals needed to get a pen test done if your application is on a public cloud somewhere. There's also different applications out there that they analyze logs, events, incidents, anything that happens in your cloud applications. So in general, the technologies and tools that you use may be a little bit different, but, but the overall security foundations part of your job is probably going to be very similar as a cloud security engineer to a normal security engineer. It may also be part of your job to plan, implement, upgrade, troubleshoot, anything that is going up into the cloud environment. Since a lot of companies are migrating their applications from on-premises to their new cloud providers, that typically is a pretty big project that, that most companies are paying a lot of money for. And on Payscale, the average salary for a cloud security engineer is $136,000 per year. I believe that is going to be the highest salary on this list. At least I think so. There's only one left, but, but they definitely are well paid, but, but companies may also expect a higher level or higher number of years of experience compared to a regular security engineer or a regular security analyst. So definitely something to keep in mind to kind of level out that higher salary. All right, the last rule on this list of cybersecurity remote jobs is a security architect. A security architect makes about $128,000 per year in the US, which is again a very good six-figure salary. So as part of the security architect's job, you're basically going to be assessing your organization's information technology and computer systems and checking to see if there's any strengths, weaknesses, maybe doing gap analysis of what, what is needed, what vendors or technologies you may want to bring on, checking to see if there's any old or antiquated technologies that, that is no longer being used, or maybe it's not being as well utilized by your security teams. You may also be working on the network side with for example, setting up any local area networks or LANs, as well as since you're working as a remote person, much of your company is probably also working remote or in a hybrid capacity. So setting up a virtual private network or a VPN, that entire network setup is a big project. And that typically also involves a security architect or a network architect. And part of your job is going to be needing to know about your entire company's architecture, what encryption you're using, the applications and systems that are reliant on other underlying hardware, firmware, or anything else, even things that you may not think about on an everyday basis. For example, if you update a certain technology, what other applications or systems are going to be impacted by that change and who can you get involved to make sure that things are upgraded and patched and managed as efficiently as possible without breaking other things down. So as a security architect, you have you have a very high level job of understanding everything that's going on in your company's environment slash architecture, but that also means that you may also need to get a bit granular and understanding more technical details that most people aren't thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any other cybersecurity remote jobs that, that you've seen that are very popular nowadays. These are just the five that I've seen the most of when I was looking for cybersecurity roles, as well as the ones that also just sound the most interesting and relevant to a general cybersecurity audience. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and anything else that you'd like to add to this video. And as always, if you guys aren't on our Discord yet, feel free to join down in the description below where we talk about all things career related. And this is definitely one of the questions that come up fairly often in terms of remote jobs and cybersecurity jobs in general. 
And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.